Hey guys, good morning to you. How is everybody this morning? Hey, so uh, welcome gentlemen, dog trainers, your companions, but also more importantly, welcome to the guests and dignitaries from uh, Loving Canine. Uh, Going to be a great morning this morning to do some recognitions, talk about the program, um, but we are uh, excited that you guys were able to attend and that we were able to put this uh, on today. So again, good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Brian Holmes, so I get the pleasure of being the Chief Deputy Warden here at Mule Creek, so kind of like the number two guy. So Patrick Cavell is our warden. Um, unfortunately, he's off-site today and was not able to make it, so you guys are stuck with me this morning. So, all right. <clears throat> so I wrote a little something that I just wanted to talk about and how I really appreciate this program. Um, but just a, a little bit about myself. So I, I began my career with the Department of Corrections in 1996 at CSP SAC, California State Prison, Sacramento, and um, transferred here in 2008. And been here ever since, and been very fortunate to be here at Mule Creek, lots of good program. And over the years, I've seen many new programs develop within the Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. And if you were to tell me that back when I first started, that one day California prisons would be housing dogs, that the incarcerated persons would be training them, raising them, and loving them, and that they would be trained to be their handlers, and that these dogs were going to uh, live inside the prison, live inside our walls, live inside our cells with our handlers, um, and then that these dogs, upon their graduations from the program, would be placed with children and veterans and need uh, to, help, to help support them. And some would even go on to become guide dogs for the blind. I would have thought you guys were absolutely crazy. It was unheard of. I mean, I've been doing this a long time, 1996 in the Department of Corrections. I think you guys, more importantly, would agree with us that we are not the same department that we were when some of you guys came in, and definitely from when I came in. A lot of good opportunity for you guys out there. Uh, Tender Loving Canine arrived at Mule Creek uh, with the first three puppies and started the program on Facility A. And as you guys know, Facility A, it's a level four uh, facility, and the warden at the time determined that he wanted the dog program but he wanted it on facility A, a level three, a level four institutions, because if it can succeed on a level four, it was gonna be successful throughout Mule Creek. Several of our staff had their doubts about the dogs being on the yard, but with the help, dedication, and working relationship with Tender Loving Canine, our custody staff, we quickly were off and running in the dog business. So fast forward. Eight years later, the TLC dog program continues to thrive and expand into Facility C, as well as up the hill at Facility E. Even though challenging times navigating and dealing with a little thing called COVID, which was not fun at all, trying to run program, run this type of program during those difficult times. Thank heavens that is behind us and we all working together, push through that difficult time. With the partnership between Mill Creek State Prison, Tender Loving Canine, and the dog trainers, I am pleased to say Mill Creek alone, as of today, has graduated 69 dogs. 69 dogs have graduated from Mill Creek State Prison alone and have been placed into um, the recipients on the outside. The incarcerated population has embraced this program and I personally have seen a great benefit of creating normalization within these facilities and overall creating a better environment, not only for the offenders, but more importantly also for the staff of what the dogs bring to a facility. I would really like to thank um, our Mule Creek Tender Loving Canine Handlers that come out day in and day out for their commitment to the program the hours, the hours they spend here training our handlers, supporting them, and even those long hours spending transporting dogs in and out of a, the prison for their field trips on the outside and interaction outside these prison walls. 
The incarcerated individuals who have accepted the challenge in becoming dog handlers, the hours in training and support these dogs, you're with them for 24 hours a day. I say thank you for that, and please keep up the great work. And to our Mule Creek staff for the work they do day in and day out, keeping the facilities safe, keeping program up and running, working with the canine program, and keeping these programs up. Um, it is, definitely takes us all to continue to run this program. So on behalf of Warden Cavell, the entire management team here at Mule Creek, I say congratulations today. Um, I'm pleased, please keep, keep up the amazing work. And um, you all have made me a believer that dogs in prison really does work. Appreciate it. And then next, I'd like to introduce the uh, assistant president, uh, Tony. Are you out there? So good morning, everyone. This is great to be here today celebrating the milestone with each one of you. I am Tony Blevins, Assistant Director, Guide Dogs of America, Tender Loving Canines. President and Director Russ Gitlin could not make it today due to scheduling conflicts, but sends his best to all the graduates two-legged and four-legged today. I want to say a few words regarding Russ, who had the vision to expand on a school that provided 70 years of guide dogs only. His goal has always been finding ways to put more highly trained service dogs in the hands of people that need them, which is actually the mission of GDA TLC. He then sought to research a program that would fit the GDA mold. And in his vision, he found Tender Loving Canines Assisted Dogs. After seeing the rehabilitation these dogs provide to the incarcerated inmates and to the rehabilitation these dogs provided to their handlers, he knew he had found the match. He set our mission and merged TLCAD into GDA, forming GDA TLC. Expanding that mission <clears throat> of providing more highly trained service dogs into the hands of people who needed them. So here we are today, and thank you very much, Russ. A few thank yous as this program begins. I want to recognize a colleague, a colleague and friend with us today, Mr. Lee Pearson, retired IMAW General Vice President and current GDA TLC Board of Directors meeting. Lee has a long standing with the IAM and with GDA. Thank you for being here, Lee. In 1948, the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers founded Guide Dogs of America, formerly known as International Guiding Eyes. The IAM and GDA continue collaborating, inspiring, and fundraising to provide expertly matched service dogs to create true companionship. With that said, I would like to thank the gratitude to the warden of Mule Creek and his entire staff for their unwavering support and belief of this transmative power of initiative. And special thanks to Mr. Covello, warden, Mule Creek State Prison, Mr. Brian Holmes, chief deputy warden, Mr. Campbell, public information officer, Mr. Pedersen, Associate Warden, GDA, ADA Coordinator. I also would like to acknowledge the work of GDA TLC trainers and the incarcerated trainers who dedicated their time and effort to molding these service dogs. So a special thanks to Ms. Hunt, GDA TLC Programs Director, if you would raise your hand. <laughs> <clears throat> Ms. Herman, Assistant Program Director. Ms. Maples. Ms. Maples, Manager of Service Dog Programs. Ms. Paris, Lead Service Dog Trainer. So I just want to talk a little bit about GDA real quick. Uh, 
Also, none of this takes place without the full GDA TLC support village, as we call it. So I thank you to our many wonderful puppy raisers. We have well over 100 of you. And as we say on campus, you all rock. Our very gracious sponsors and donors, we say thank you. To over our 250 volunteers, we say thank you. Our kennel staff, who are simply the best, this crew keeps the kennels clean, keeps our pups and dogs fed, socialized 24-7, 365. Our veterinarian department, a training department, a puppy development department, a puppy coordinator, nursery staff, where it all begins, admissions, graduation, maintenance and facilities, and the great marketing team, and our admin staff. I am honored here to be here today to acknowledge the incredible work at Mule Creek and our service dog program. It is a pleasure to witness this program's dedication and compassion, which profoundly impacts the lives of individuals, families, and communities. This program is just not about training service dogs, it's about changing lives. The service dogs trained here go on to support veterans with PTSD and TBI, children with autism, and assist with facilities such as hospitals, schools, and courtrooms. The impact of these dogs are immeasurable. They offer comfort, support, and independence to those in need at no cost to the recipient. I am thrilled that GDA and TLC is on pace to graduate 60, guide, 60 teams this year, a monumental achievement. This would not have been possible without the hard work, the commitment, and the kindness of everyone involved in this program. Through your hard work, you are not only training these dogs, also contributing to the well-being of individuals, families, and communities in need. You are giving back to communities across America and Canada. Also at the GDA campus, we purpose breed, raise, and train guide dogs for the blind and visually impaired. Guide dogs that give visually impaired and blind members and people the independence and mobility to become independent and free of the need of a human guide or a white cane. These dogs are trained to navigate the busiest streets such as New York City, Los Angeles, Texas, Ontario, Canada, Quebec, Canada. For our veterans, you are literally saving lives. I understand this very well as I am a disabled veteran who proudly served four years in the United States Marine Corps, two years United States Marine Corps Reserve. I then served four years Army National Guard, Regent Senior NCO, and I enrolled and obtained a couple of degrees where I then applied for Federal Army Officer School. I graduated as the top of my class, remained there for the next 10 years in active reserve and guard status with helicopter aviation, heavy combat arms and heavy co commanding armor on battlefield tanks, while also employed at Fort Novacell in the helicopter maintenance test flight section performing helicopter maintenance test flights. After speaking with many of our veterans, they have told me that you're giving them back the freedom they fought so hard to protect. Our veterans who returned from proudly serving our countries of America and Canada can struggle to deal with PTSD and or a traumatic brain injury and they struggle because they can't fix what's wrong. The dogs you train provide our comfort to our nation's veterans, our veterans who cannot close their eyes at night in fear of reliving their traumatic event, or cannot leave their homes, cannot even go grocery shopping, cannot even have dinner at a restaurant, or lead a productive life. Many veterans hide their PTSD and TBI wounds while trying to survive. These are what veterans call invisible combat or non-combat training and cause America to lose approximately 20 veterans every day to suicide according to the latest statistics. For our children with autism, 
you're giving them hope for the future. The treatment these dogs provide gives children a chance at a more normal life. It helps the family handle daily tasks, such as simply brushing their teeth, getting dressed in the morning, going to school, even engaging in class. So the wave, the bow, the fist bump commands are just not performing tricks. They help make being a child with autism a little bit easier at being a child. Because of your work, children have gone from being nonverbal to college graduates. So last but not least, our facility dogs. Each day we're finding new avenues of placement, hospitals, fire departments, police stations, courtrooms. Dogs you are training are comforting not only just one individual, but families and communities. We have several of our incarcerated trainers who have been released between the two prisons, Mule Creek and RJD, who stated it was this program that kept them while incarcerated from seeking trouble or walking away from trouble, knowing they could be removed from this program with almost any infraction. Lucas, who served time here at Mule Creek as an incarcerated inmate, spoke at our Campus Guide and Service Dog graduation recently about his life. He has completed his bachelor's degree. He is pursuing his master's degree in rehabilitation for disabilities. He also has his own apartment, a full-time job, and get this, as a lead dog trainer at one of the nation's well-known pet stores. He stated the lifelong impression this very program taught him. Therefore, imagine a released inmate as a great speaker at GDA TLC graduations or a guest speaker at the IMAW conferences. In closing, I want to express my heartfelt appreciation to everyone involved your hard work is changing lives and making the world a better place. Thank you. All right. I'm gonna, we're gonna recognize all of our January and April dogs that graduated today from Mill Creek. Um, most of the dogs did come from the Echo facility, so the guys will not be here to speak this morning, but I still want to run through all the dogs, and we have a little video from their client. First dog, I can see the screen, yep, uh, is Barlow. Barlow graduated as an autism service dog and was matched with Laura. Laura is the mother of three beautiful children, Bryn, Brooklyn, and Christine. Her nine-year-old daughter, Bryn, and eight-year-old daughter, Brooklyn, are both on the autism spectrum. She's committed to giving her daughters the help and support they need to thrive in their daily lives. A typical day presents many challenges in her family, and she was seeking support of an autism service dog to mitigate unwanted behaviors, create calm after emotional meltdowns, relieve symptoms of stress and anxiety, and to help socialize with peers. Barlow was trained by trainer Robert Mansfield, who's recently paroled and is no longer at Mule Creek. Um, and now we have a short little video from Laura. Hi, Robert. My name is Laura. Um, I am the mother of uh, three children, two of which are on the autism spectrum. Um, I have Barlow here, and I just wanted to really thank you. Um, I can tell that you put countless hours and uh, dedication into training him. He is the sweetest, most loving and skilled puppy I have ever encountered. <laughs> um, and my girls are really going to benefit from his calmness um, and the skills that he's gonna be able to offer them um, to kind of bring down their anxiety and um, just help them be a part of this world. Um, so thank you from the bottom of my heart, truly. Uh, there's not enough words, but um, you have a gift, truly. Um, so thank you. All right. Next up is Jackson. Uh, Jackson graduated as a veteran mobility service dog and was matched with Kim. Kim is a retired lieutenant 
colonel and wounded warrior who served in the Air Force for 21 years. During her service, Kim completed two combat tours in Iraq and two year-long deployments as the commander of the Force Support Squadrons in United Arab Emirates and Qatar. Kim was honorably retired in 2018 after being diagnosed with spinal cancer, likely caused by the burn pit fumes in Iraq. The surgery and subsequent radiant to treat her tumor left Kim with no feeling from her mid chest down and nerve deficits, making it hard to walk and balance, which in turn made outings to busy places difficult. With the help of her mobility dog, she is leading a more active life now. Jackson was trained by Robert Yim and Moises Tejada. They're there, and now we have a brief little video from Kim. Okay, it's gonna be hard for me, I'm already starting to cry. Um. Robert and Dante, I just want to say thank you so, so, so much. You have no idea what this means to me and for my life and how it's going to be um, changing. Um, I know it's probably like a kid to you, so I'd like you to know that I'm going to take such good care of him. And uh, he's going back to Illinois, where he's going to live. I work full time at a rehab hospital. Um, he is my mobility dog, but I know everybody is very excited to have him there. And um, he's going to touch many more lives than just mine. Um, he's going to have two dog sisters, um, a couple of huskies to play with. And uh, we live on a big farm, so in his spare time, he's got plenty of places to run. And uh, I'm going to take really, really good care of him, I promise. But um, you can see he's such a good boy, you guys know. Um, you know, just already, it's already been life changing for me. We went to the beach the other day and I spend a lot of my time looking down because of my spinal cord injury. I can't feel my legs and I'm constantly looking down just to make sure I'm not tripping. I've broken my foot, I've sprained my ankle. And you know, the other day we went to the beach and I was just able to look at the beach and it was just amazing. I got up to go to the restroom all on my own before my husband would walk me there to make sure I'm okay. And it's just like I have my freedom back. I can go do things and um, I'm just, I don't know how to express how very grateful I am to you. And um, I can't repay you, but just to say thank you very, very much. And I promise you, I will take very, very good care of him. So Jackson. Can you wave? Can you wave? Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Next up is Kuma. Kuma graduated as an autism service dog and was matched with Rosie. Rosie's the mom of an autistic 11-year-old named Clay. Clay was diagnosed at three years old. Clay's the youngest of five children and has been looking forward to their autism dog. And. Uh, Kuma was trained by Carlissa Geary, who recently transferred to fire camp and is also no longer at Mule Creek. And now a brief word from Rosie. Hey, my name's Rosie, and I just want to thank you so much for all that you guys do, uh, taking care of these puppies and training them. I, I never imagined that a dog would be able to do what these dogs can do, and it's really thankful. I'm very thankful to you. And... Um, for the man who raised Kuma, thank you so much. This is a dog that's gonna change the life of my autistic daughter, and uh, it's already changed mine. Uh, I was a little bit afraid of big dogs. I had only have, had chihuahuas, um, but I'm in love with this dog, and I'm in love with what I already see as the possibilities for my daughter. and. For that, I'm gonna be eternally grateful. And without you guys, uh, this wouldn't be possible. So thank you very, very much from the bottom of my heart. All right, next we have Paxton. Um, Paxton graduated as a hospital facility dog and was matched with Megan. Megan has been a certified child health life specialist for six years. In her role as a facility dog handler, she works alongside her facility dog at Huntsville Hospital for women and children in their pediatric radiology and surgery areas at their outpatient pediatric therapy clinic and on their antepartum unit where pregnant women are on bed rest. In their work together, she and Paxton help decrease anxiety and meet specific medical and treatment goals. She enjoys working with her facility dog and meeting the needs of their patients and families. And Paxton was trained by trainer Damon Pashilk. 
And now a brief word from Megan. Hello, my name is Megan and this is Paxton. And we just, I personally just wanted to come on and thank you guys so much for training Paxton and you all did an amazing job. Um, he is the smartest boy I've ever met and I'm so proud of him and all of that is thanks to you guys for putting your time and effort and passion into training him um, to be the best he can be. Um, yes, um, he will be working with pediatric patients um, at a children's hospital helping ease anxiety and meet um, treatment goals and so I'm so excited to bring him home and start working alongside him and just be able to witness firsthand the impact that he is going to make in our patients and families lives and that again is just all thanks to you for helping train him um, so thank you from the bottom of my heart um, for your time and um, dedication to training him. And those were our dogs that graduated in January. Can we get a round of applause real quick? <laughs> All right, now our dogs that just graduated in April and got matched. Um, first up is Bindi. Bindi. Bindi graduated as an autism service dog and was matched with Sarah. Sarah is a special education teacher turned full-time stay-at-home mom of three beautiful children with varying needs. Sarah and autism service dog Bindi worked together as a team to benefit her five-year-old son. And Bindi was trained by trainer Stephen Betty. And now we'll have a brief word from Sarah. We just wanted to say thank you to Stephen for all the love and dedication that you've put into Bindi. Um, just continually amazed at all the things that she can do. Um, our son is so excited for her to come home. We were able to FaceTime one time while I've been here and she, the first thing he asked was, does she know how to wave? And so she got to see, or my son Elliot got to see a wave and he was so excited and it was so sweet. Um, and little does he know, that's just one of the many things that she knows. So um, Bindi's gonna change our son's life and change our life. All right. Next is Gizmo. Gizmo graduated as a veteran mobility service dog and was matched with William. William is a retired Army First Sergeant who served over 20 years of service. William suffers from PTSD due to military trauma and that makes it difficult for him to function every day. And Gizmo was trained by trainer Arthur Henderson. And now we'll have a brief word from William. Arthur, this is uh, William. I am here with Gizmo, and I just want to take this opportunity to thank you for what all you have done for Gizmo and all the training. Uh, I, feel, I see that you have done a really good job with him, and he's really helping me out with my disability, and I just want to take this opportunity to thank you. Keep up the good work. All right. Now we got Lainey. Lainey graduated as an autism service dog and was matched with Pollyanna. Pollyanna is the mom of three boys. Two of her boys are autistic. Lainey helps her 11-year-old son mitigate difficulties he experiences due to autism. Lainey helps with emotional regulation, social interactions, and allows her son to better navigate a world that can oftentimes be overwhelming. The family is excited for the positive changes that Lainey's brought to them. And Lainey was trained by trainer Ronald Prasad. And now a brief word from Pollyanna. Oh, trainer Prasad, I want to thank you for training Lainey with so much love and care. She's such a sweet girl and she's, I love you. <laughs> I can tell that she was very loved and she's going to be such a blessing <laughs> to her family and just make such a change she already has. And I just thank you for making her so good at her cues and so loving and taking such good care of her. So best wishes to you and thank you for the gift of training Lainey for us. All right. Now our dog that was trained on Charlie Yard. Uh, that's Wisdom. <laughs> Wisdom graduated as an autism service dog and was matched with Meredith. 
Meredith and Wisdom work as a dedicated team in support of her five-year-old son, Noah. They assist Noah with daily challenges related to autism, including easing transitions, regulating anxiety by providing calming sensory input, as well as improving his social and communication skills. The whole family is so grateful for the amazing gift of wisdom. And wisdom was trained by trainer Desmond Perry. If he can please join me up here. Okay, first I'd like to say thank you for providing me this opportunity. Thank you for, from uh, Guide Dogs of America and Tender Loving Canines. Thank you for my team for helping me uh, with Wisdom. Wisdom was an amazing dog. He brought a lot back to my life, and I hope that he brings the same back to the family that he's helping. Thank you. All right, and now a brief word from Meredith. Hi, Desmond. Um, my name is Meredith. I just wanted to say thank you so much for all of your hard work and training wisdom. I promise this is going to be his last graduation because he's never, <laughs> never coming back here again. We've bonded a ton, and I have just absolutely loved working with him. And I know that when I bring him home to my five-year-old son, he's going to um, change his life. All right, one more round of applause for all our graduates. Good job, guys. Um, all right, I would like to welcome Stacy up now. Uh, Stacy received an autism service dog, Keeper, uh, that was trained at Meal Creek. So she's going to come up and just share a little bit about her time with Keeper. Hello, my name is Stacy, and I am the mother of two autistic children. And this is Keeper. He benefits my 11-year-old son, Brandon. About 14 months ago, Keeper came into our lives and stole our hearts. It feels so surreal to be here when, where Keeper was trained by his trainer, Robert. And I must say that Robert was right. Keeper loves his naps, which I'm sure a lot of these dogs do too. Um, but when he's ready to work, he's ready. I am very grateful for the opportunity to speak about all the amazing work Keeper has done over this past year. At the age of four, my son Brandon was diagnosed with autism, and shortly after, with severe anxiety and fears. For many years, Brandon isolated himself from the world around him. Social gatherings were very challenging and overstimulating. Changes in his routine were triggering and overwhelming. We couldn't even sing happy birthday to him. As he got older, his anxiety escalated and he started self-harming. We provided every support possible, but we felt defeated until Keeper came along, and we saw the light at the end of the tunnel. Keeper has given Brandon so much confidence and reassurance. Brandon is now thriving. He is an honor roll student and a positive role model to his classmates. He is no longer afraid to step out of his bubble. And he is even learning how to play the electric guitar now. Brandon and Keeper have bonded in a way that I couldn't even imagine. I am so proud of them both. Keeper has been such a blessing. He truly is a keeper. Thank you all to all the trainers for all your hard work and dedication. It does not go unseen. Congratulations to you all. Thank you.
All right, now we're gonna have a few guys come up and do a little brief demonstration um, and talk about what they're doing so they can kind of show off for a couple minutes what they do here and what they work with while the dogs are in training. Hello, everyone. First, I would like to thank everyone for attending our graduation ceremony. I would like to thank GDA and Tender Loving Canines and the uh, Mill Creek State Prison staff for making all this happen once again. This is Kenzie. She's a black Labrador retriever. Kenzie's at the end of her training and knows all 55 cues and will be ready for service next month. Kinsey will be doing a retrieval of getting some keys and bringing them to her trainer. This specific behavioral task will be a big help for a client that has autism or mobility health issues. She will also be able to get a specific object from any place, safe, cabinets, tables, or shelf, and put the object in a certain place. Also, Kinsey can deliver an object to someone or place the object in that person's hand. Kinsey really loves and enjoys the specific behavioral tasks. She's definitely going to make someone's quality of life so much easier. Let's give a round of applause for Kinsey and her training. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Robert, and this is Ernesto. He's going to be helping me out. And this beautiful creature is Rookie. Um, this is my car, so I look professional. And we are going to do a couple of cues. This one is uh, come, and the object is um, it's a retrieval cue. So this is a very important cue, one of the main ones that can help you save your dog's life if it gets away from you. Um, uh, it's a recall cue, so uh, uh, but yes, it, it can. Um, it's a behavior that can save the life if it gets away from you. It is also a foundational cue um, training, training foundational behaviors to our dogs, improve communication, and our uh, building blocks for future training and learning. Uh, the next cue, this one uh, is called belly up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, belly up, <laughs> belly up is uh, it's a cue used for uh, cooperative care, uh, meaning you could check underneath the carriage, make sure everything is working properly, um, check paws, things like that. Um, but it also evolved into a social cue. Um, you know, when you show your dog could do belly up, of course, everyone really likes that. So uh, it has evolved over time, and. Uh, um, um, how you could also use it for other cues, putting uh, the booties on the feet, or on the paws, excuse me. Um, but you have to be careful with that. Rookie does not like things on her, uh, on her paws, so you can poison a cue, meaning that you can hurt that cue if you're not careful. So please know your dog. Um, and this next one is called Post.
Um, <laughs> uh, POST is an assisted queue. Um, it is a queue that can help you uh, with mobility issues. It can help you stand up um, as well as uh, ease you into a sitting position. Um, and that's it. Uh, thank you. Again, this is uh, this is handler Galvan and his dog Journey. Uh, they're going to perform uh, three cues. One of them is called Side. So with this cue, you'll notice that she will go in front of the handler and go to the right side of the. <laughs> right there it is right side of the dog all right side of the handler uh this helps this you notice that she her shoulder blades line up directly with the, the pooch uh, with the trainer's legs heel is the exact same way this is uh that's the heel right there this is the exact same way uh this cue is good to for somebody who has mobility problems or this is to get the do uh, dog to position himself Circle is the other cue right there. And the dog goes behind the handler. These cues right here can help somebody, help the dog avoid the obstacle or traffic problems. And it can also be a, a barrier for somebody with PTSD to, to uh, how can I say this? Uh, to block somebody with PTSD from having that uh, meltdown or that problem, you know, that that, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, those are the three cues that we did side, heel, and circle right there. morning. Uh, my name is Ramon and this is uh, Juanito and uh, dog here this is Duncan. He's a special guy. And uh, so today we'll, we will demonstrate uh, two fun but uh, very effective cues. Uh, both cues facilitate social interaction and social skills. Uh, so first we have hug. This one is special because it interrupts psychological responses to stress. <laughs> In other words, hugs are always nice, especially coming from this guy. <laughs> when they happen. <laughs> Technical difficulties. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> On to the next one. <laughs> Our second cue is also super cool because it, it also facilitates social interaction and decreases social isolation. Uh, smiles are guaranteed for this one. Plus, it's a, plus it's a good way. It's a good way to end our presentation.
Thank you. All right, nicely done. Um, next up, I'm going to invite Emily, who received facility dog Preston, and she's going to talk about Preston's career. Welcome, Emily. Well, first, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to be back here. It is incredible to think that the last time I was standing here was almost six years ago, almost six years to the day, actually. So I know you've heard a lot of really great messages and stories from various different individuals who have received dogs recently, but it's such an honor to be back here and tell all of you a little bit about Preston's career over the last six years. So Preston was one of the very first dogs that arrived here at Mule Creek. He was one of the first three that arrived here. And so if you could advance the slide here. Uh, this is a picture actually of him and his fellow classmates that graduated in May of 2018. So a little over six years ago, I was standing here with Jackson, Stewart, Amador, and then Preston. And so when Preston left here, left Mule Creek, he ended up going to work at Vandenberg Air Force Base, now Space Force Base, and he spent his career serving the military community. So his job was working in the Sexual Assault Prevention and Response Office office. This was an excellent opportunity for Preston to be able to reach different clients that I was working with. It was an opportunity for him to be able to not only educate our community about the support resources that are available to the community, but also the ability to work directly with clients. I know I've told people before when they've asked me, you know, how did you decide to put in a request for a facility dog? And a lot of it is the fact that for many years I had worked with a crime victims for roughly about 10 years and there was all of the degrees in the world all of the training that I could have but there was still a barrier in reaching people and truly taking care of people and Preston was the ability to be able to bridge where my clients needed support and where I was able to assist them so I'm really thankful to be able to show you a few pictures here today uh, Preston is retired now making a long car ride is a little bit more difficult to him so he wasn't able to make the trip but I hope you do enjoy Enjoy the pictures that we do have. On this next slide here, if we advance one more, uh, does give you some pictures about his news articles that he had. So when he arrived at Vandenberg, we did a really nice presentation for him on what he was going to be doing. And a year later, he actually did another follow-up story. And at that point in time, he was voted as Airman of the Week for the entire Air Force. So I thought that was pretty cool. Not only did he beat all of his two-legged service counterparts, but he was the most popular. I think when we ended up finally getting it to where he was featured on the website. Um, over 60,000 people had liked his photo and had shared it, and a lot of people shared different stories about how they either knew Preston or knew the work that he did. A couple other pictures here. Uh, a little bit about the work of a facility dog. I know when a, a dog is placed for a veteran or an autism service dog, uh, a lot of times we really understand what will they be doing at that point in time, but facility dogs is a little bit different. A lot of times people aren't really sure what a facility dog is going to be doing, so I do have some pictures here talking a little bit more about day in the life of a facility dog. So Preston helped do various different types of education and outreach. I went from being in office when they they would say, hey, the Sexual Assault Prevention and Response Office is here to train you. I could immediately hear people, okay, here we go again, another training, to all of a sudden when I would walk in the room with Preston, people would cheer, people would be excited. I heard about every dog that anybody ever knew or owned during the course of their lifetime. Uh, most people had no idea who I was. I was just a lady on the other side of the leash, but the experiences that I was able to have over the six years in his working career have truly changed my life and changed the life of other people as well. Uh, Preston did a lot of outreach, a lot of abilities to connect with people, not only individuals coming in for our program, but also people returning from deployment. That was oftentimes a really difficult time. There wasn't anything that people wanted to see or hear, but they just wanted to be able to sit with him, and he would do a lot of his snuggle commands, his bow, his different things that you all have taught him. Uh, was really impactful to be able to have that connection with different individuals. 
Uh, he had the ability as well going for a lot of people going off to the military. They're leaving their family. They're leaving their friends. They don't have anybody. And so one of the things that we had at our base was a school where people were going through in order to become technically proficient in their new jobs. And sometimes people wouldn't have any family members that were able to travel to where we were at. And so Preston actually used to get invited um, pretty frequently to attend graduation and be a part of that for different service members. Uh, the work that he did not only reached our on-base community, but he was also reached by our off-base community as well. Um, there is another picture here that does show that we he was recognized by our, our local North County Rape Crisis and Child Protection Center for the work that he was able to do. He was able to reach individuals all around the world, and so the different stories that he was able to run in the paper uh, were picked up nationally across the entire Department of Defense and advertising the resources and and services that we had available um, within our SAPR program. And one of the biggest things is that he was able to build barrier bridges. He was able to break down barriers. He was able to be that person, so to speak, that was able to connect with people and oftentimes really their darkest time. And so over the six years of his working career and as he is retired now, most days you'll find him walking, you'll find him at the beach. He has very nice, comfortable dog bed. He's very much earned it. Uh, but the one thing is that as I left here in 2018, I did not have any dog training at all. I had two misbehaved golden retrievers before I had uh, Preston and the work that he was able to do was strictly because of all of the training that you all are able to do. You all set these dogs up for success. You make it very easy for us as the handlers as we are working through our own challenges in both our jobs and our personal lives. And I just want to thank you for all the work that you have done because I have personally had the opportunity to see and experience the work that that he did over the course of his career. And there are many people that have shared with me their lives have been changed, their lives have been saved in some circumstances because of the work that Preston was able to do. And so as I end here today, I just wanna say thank you for the work that you all do. Uh, thank you for the work of uh, GDA, TLC, and the work that we have here in the system to be able to continue to allow these dogs to be here. And as a recipient that has seen a dog go from graduation all the way to the end of their professional career. Um, he's a hobby worker now, I say. I'll still take him out every so often. Uh, but he still brings smiles to people's faces. He's still that dog that people love so much to be able to see. And the lives that he has impacted go well beyond the counts that I have. But you know, thousands of people know him and the work that he's done. So thank you again for all that you do in supporting this program. Good morning, everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jamie Hunt, and I am the Director of Programs at Guide Dogs of America Tender Loving Canines. First, uh, we would like to thank the prison staff uh, for supporting the GDA TLC program. Uh, as you guys have seen, our program has really grown significantly over the past few years, and you're always open to listening and collaborating with us um, and, and meeting our needs, so we really appreciate that, so thank you all. Next, we want to thank all of our incarcerated trainers. Uh, whether your dog is still in training, it's graduated, or switched to the guide dog track, you have all played a very important role in making these service dog teams successful, and we are so proud of you. I also want to recognize all the hard work for those of you who have worked with a dog who may have been career changed. These are never easy decisions for us to make, and we pride ourselves on ensuring that all of the dogs that are placed have suitable temperaments and a willingness to work so that we can make long-lasting matches. Even though a dog gets career changed, please know that you have made a difference in that dog and it will still go on to touch other lives. For those of you who don't know, uh, being a service dog is a hard task to do. Um, and right now, it's about 40% of our dogs go on to go to recipients. You know, I'm always touched by the statements I hear from all of the incarcerated trainers at both of our prison programs. To hear how the program has created this opportunity to not only give back to society, but also to teach valuable skills like communication, empathy, trust, and patience. And everyone knows a snuggle from one of our dogs always puts a smile on your face. 
Thank you to Stacy and Keeper and Emily and Preston for traveling to share your stories. Uh, it's always wonderful for the incarcerated trainers as well as the prison staff uh, to see the commitment uh, with these beautiful matches, so thank you. Finally, uh, we would like to thank our GDA TLC staff that work here at Mule Creek. So Ms. Maples and Ms. Parisi, let's give them a big round of applause. We thank you all for joining us today. We are excited to return to celebrating your successes and look forward to continuing these graduations in the future. We hope that you enjoyed hearing from two of our recipients and are inspired by seeing the differences that you have made in their lives. You should all be very proud of the work that you do. Congratulations to everybody and thank you for joining us. Uh, we will be uh, taking some photos, so stick around afterwards, but thank you everybody.